Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I'm going to be working on my 94 Ford uh, 73 diesel um, four wheel drive and I'm going to be working on replacing uh, the front ball joints. It's uh, been needing uh, some ball joints for a while. I know it has one ball joint that's really worn out uh, and I'm expecting that the others will not be any better. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all four of them. Uh, which is good practice if you're uh, if you have a worn out ball joint it's a best practice uh, is to replace all four of them at once uh, because if you have one that's worn out the other four or the other three most likely have the same amount of miles on them as the one that's worn out um, occasionally people will swap out a single ball joint so it's possible that the other three don't have the same amount of miles on them but uh, most likely they do and if you replace one ball joint with a new one um, then that adds uh, additional stress to the others that are worn out uh, because the new one doesn't have any slop in it doesn't move so all of that extra movement uh, from the other ball joints will accelerate the wear um, that they already have and just make them fail that much quicker so best practice is to replace all four um, if you have to uh, you know, if you can't afford to replace all four, um, you could replace just one side. Replace the upper and lower on one side uh, as a pair, and I would say that's the minimum uh, minimum recommendation is that you replace them in a pair. Um, but best thing to do, replace all four. So that's what we're going to do on my '94 uh, Ford Dana 60 front axle here. Four-wheel drive front axles have what they call an inner knuckle and an outer knuckle. The inner knuckle is the C that is cast uh, and welded into the ends of the axle tubes on either side of the front axle. And the outer knuckle is what I usually refer to as a steering knuckle. And that's what pivots on the ball joints and allows your wheels to turn. So I'm going to go through and show you guys how to diagnose uh, front end movement um, without having to necessarily remove uh, remove the wheel and just give it an initial inspection and find out whether it's ball joints or tie rod ends that are the problem uh, and then I'm going to tear the whole front end apart here and we're going to get all the way down to uh, uh, to the to the knuckles and get these off of here um, for removing the ball joints I'm going to be using a handheld press uh, that I'm going to rent from uh, my local auto parts store here I don't think they charge anything to use the ball joint press you just have to leave them a deposit and uh, you get your deposit back when you return it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I do have a, a hydraulic press out in my storage shed here, but um, I've pressed out ball joints uh, with, the, with the shop press before. Um, and if you don't have the right tooling already built to support the knuckle, um, Pressing them out isn't really a problem. Pressing them back in square and straight is the problem because the uh, the knuckle doesn't have a lot of flat area on it, so you can't. Uh, it's very difficult to support it and press the knuckle in the bore straight after you uh, have removed the old ones. So pressing the new ball joint into the bore is is difficult. For taking everything apart, I'm just going to use my air tools. Uh, it speeds up the job. Um, there's really not a whole lot that has to come off. The wheel has to come off, the front hubs have to come off uh, with the calipers and rotors. Um, the calipers you can leave brake lines connected and just uh, compress the pistons in. I'll be using a C-clamp for that. I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, compress, the, compress the pistons in the, into the caliper, set the caliper aside, zip tie it in place so it can't fall and break your brake line off. And if you're, if you're doing this job and you're replacing the ball joints and you want to go through and rebuild your front axle or freshen it up, um, I would do ball joints, hub bearings, and steering all at the same time. Alright guys, so we're over here on the driver's side, uh, which is still fully assembled here as you can see. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you guys how you can diagnose um, a bad ball joint or a bad tie rod end if you're feeling a clunk or a thunk in uh, one side of your solid front axle truck um, and you're not sure what it is you don't want to buy parts that you don't necessarily need um, this is the way you can diagnose that what you want to check is movement in the axle uh, or in the hub uh, top and bottom if you have movement top and bottom that's a bad ball joint or loose spindle bearings which I'm going to show you in a second here if you have movement left to right 
and you can feel a thunk when you're turning it back and forth left to right and you have some looseness in there that's your steering components okay most most likely so all you need is your hands and uh, a pry bar of some kind and what you want to do is uh, <clears throat> leave the tire on so that you have leverage against uh, against the hub if you just try to grab the rotor and move it you're not going to have as much leverage as you do with the big tire on here so if you lift up with your pry bar and you feel movement up and down that's a ball joint or potentially uh, spindle nut bearings or hub bearings so we're just going to rock it here I don't know if you can hear that but you can definitely hear a thunk in there I'm going to do the same thing left to right I don't feel any thunking. There's a little bit of movement there, okay, from the steering wheel when it's in the lock position. There's going to be a little bit of movement in the steering, so you'll be moving the pitman arm back and forth a little bit on the steering box. But I don't feel any play. There's no looseness. There's no clunking. So that's because I've already replaced all the steering components. This is our outer steering knuckle on the front uh, axle. This is our inner C or inner knuckle on the uh, Dana 60. Uh, you can see I've got a rag shoved in there to stop the uh, gear oil from pouring out of it. The upper ball joint is here at the top of the knuckle and it holds the two knuckles together. The lower ball joint is here at the bottom. The uh, front spindle here is what holds our front hub in place. It's held in place with five, uh, five nuts on these studs that hold the uh, spindle onto the outer knuckle or the steering knuckle. And then the hub and bearings slide over the spindle and uh, get tightened up, uh, tightened up there. Uh, these are the lock nut assemblies here for the lock nuts and the uh, securing washer that hold... Um, hold the tension on the spindle bearings and I think this one is screwed up there's two different lock rings the inner one should have a nipple on it that this washer indexes into and uh, in my case I don't think either one of mine have a nipple on them so somebody's somebody snapped that nipple off trying to take these hubs apart Alright guys, so I've got the passenger side knuckle here uh, popped off pretty easily there with just a couple whacks from the BFH and we're ready to uh, disassemble these ball joints with the ball joint press, press in the new ball joints and reassemble the knuckle. So the first thing you got to do is remove your external snap rings. Um, these are external because you have to uh, spread them out in order to remove them. An internal snap ring you have to press together that fits inside of an internal bore. So take your snap ring off and then we can uh, press these joints out. Now you'll know from the from the position of the snap ring which direction you have to push the ball joint in order to remove it from the knuckle. Uh, the snap ring is to keep the ball joint from moving any further up into the knuckle. So a ball joint press is basically a big giant C-clamp with some, uh, some spacers that allow you to position uh, just about any size uh, ball joint and remove it. It also has two hats and the hats will hold the spacers into position so they don't flop around on the press and uh, allow you to mock up a, a bunch of different fitments for the type of ball joint that you're removing.
upper ball joint. And just take a screwdriver that you don't care too much about and uh, scrub out all the grease and crud that's built up here in the in the bores so that your new ball joints sit flush. All right, just make sure you've got your land here where the uh, head of the ball joint or the shoulder of the ball joint is going to fit uh, good and clean so it can sit all the way down into the surface uh, top and bottom. You can see I've got a little bit of a burr on this uh, lower ball joint land. I think I'm going to try and chip that off with the screwdriver and, uh, and then clean that up before I press the new ball joint into place. Okay guys, so I had to uh, modify some parts here for the press. The, uh, the cups weren't tall enough so I had to cut some tubing and uh, make some tubing that would allow those long ball joints to be pressed out and then back into the passenger side knuckle. But I got the passenger side all back together here. Everything looks looks good, ready to go. Uh, next step on this side will just be uh, throwing the axle shaft back in here, lubing up the splines a little bit. Uh, I've got to lube up the spindle bearing a little bit, knock the spindle back on there with the backing plate and then I can reassemble this side, lube all the bearings, get the proper torque on the spindle bearings because this side had uh, loose spindle bearings. They were literally finger tight. I took them off with my finger. Um, the driver side, I still have to beat the knuckle off of. So I'm going to get over there and get that side taken apart. Hey guys, so I'm going to wrap up the video today uh, of the ball joint installation. Um, it's next morning here, and uh, or next day, and uh, ball joint installation went 
Okay, uh, the driver's side gave me a real hard time. I think it had been driven on for so many miles that it was really beat into the knuckle, the inner knuckle on the axle tube, and uh, just would not come loose. That plus it was so loose that when I hit the outside, the steering knuckle, with the uh, BFH to try and pop that ball joint loose, uh, normally it takes a couple whacks and your ball joints pop loose, no big deal. Because the ball joint itself was so loose internally, I think every hit that I put into it uh, was just deforming the ball joint a little bit more and it was absorbing the impact force and not putting it into the shaft of the of the ball joint to free it from the knuckle. Ultimately what, what worked was uh, heating the knuckle uh, quite, a what, quite a while, or the, the inner C. I was able to pump enough heat into it with my map gas torch to, uh, to get it to finally pop free. I used a, a large piece of DOM tubing uh, right on the head of the nut, gave that a few whacks and it, and it was able to pop the stem of the ball joint free from the inner knuckle. You know, while on the passenger side, you know, it took me two whacks and I popped the ball joints free on the passenger side, pulled the knuckle out, had it clean, and ready to press the new ball joints in in about 10 minutes. So that's normally how it goes. But fortunately, all my bearings felt pretty good. Uh, they were a little loose, but um, I didn't see any uh, major damage, no missing rollers. So I just went ahead and reused them. Uh, I'm planning to swap out this axle, so I didn't want to invest a lot of money and time into rebuilding the whole axle, which is probably what it really needs. Uh, it drives so much better. I drove it, uh, drove it today a little bit and um, over the same route that I normally go and all the usual holes that uh, are a jarring, really rough hit where the front end was loose before and now it's nice and tight. You can feel the suspension working. Uh, big improvement. Really, really happy with, uh, with replacing those ball joints. I think if you get a ball joint kit that's specifically for one-ton axles, you'll be much better off. Um, my neighborhood, O'Reilly's, where I borrowed the tool from, did not have um, the one-ton uh, ball joint press kit, and that's really what you're after. So maybe a napper or something would have the right tool. But ultimately, with enough swearing, enough hammer swinging, and uh, uh, determination, I was able to get, uh, get the job done. And right there at the end, it was kind of nice. Kevin stopped by and helped me, uh, helped me wrap things up on the truck and get, uh, get the front end back together. So that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe and leave me some comments if you think I could have done a better job or maybe there's a tip or trick that you know about replacing these ball joints that would make the job a little easier for the next guy. Uh, I tried to show how I do it and uh, explain some of the things along the way, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I had a lot of trouble there on the driver's side and I've replaced quite a few ball joints on four-wheel drive front axles. But... You know, every time you do it, it's going to be a little bit different, and in this case, uh, it was just a war, and, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, ultimately we won out there in the end.